So the question I'm going to address today is, how can I prevent aspiration pneumonia? Well, this is really worth addressing. As you may have heard, aspiration pneumonia is the number one cause of death in all people with any form of a neurodegenerative disease. So that can feel a bit looming and a bit heavy, but don't be afraid. Make sure you have a speech therapist on your team that can help you to address any problems that you might be having with swallowing. So let's go to that speech therapist and, and get your swallow assessed. Depending on the problem that you're having, you may just need to be seen in the speech therapist's office or she may come to your home to do the assessment. But you may also likely need to go into a radiology department and have an x-ray of your swallow performed. It may be called a video fluoroscopic swallow study or it could be called a modified barium swallow study. These are both x-rays and they're really the same thing. I hope to have a future video where I can show you and describe to you exactly what happens when you have that study done. It's a pretty simple procedure and quite quick. All right, so once the swallow is assessed, we'll develop a plan for how to treat whatever your difficulty is. I want to point out that right here and now, I can't give you any hard and pat, here's the exercises you need to do to make your swallow better. You have to have your swallow assessed because there are many different muscle groups involved in swallowing. So we need to identify where's the problem for you and then which exercises do I need to do to make my swallow better. So a speech therapist will work on ex these exercises that are weak. I want to make you aware that there's a modality that some of us are trained in and that you may have um, applied when you are doing your swallow exercises or eating during therapy. It's called neuromuscular electrical stimulation. You might hear it also called, shortened form, vital stim. It's where we apply electrodes to the throat or possibly we would apply it to the outside of, of your cheeks if we're working on this area more but we apply them on the outside of your throat and we send an impulse, an electrical stimulation to the muscles to retrain them to do a full contraction and therefore make them string stronger again. Now keep in mind that with Parkinson's, I understand that there can be a sensory component to the disease. And so for some of my folks, I'll find that they're a bit hypersensitive to this treatment. But that doesn't mean we can't do it. What I do is I just start with a lower current of an electrical impulse and I work slowly and gradually to increase that current so that your body can adapt to what that sensation is and no longer be hypersensitive to it. Now it might take me three or four sessions to get to what we call a therapeutic level. But while that might be kind of the bad news, I've got some really great news for you. I find that with my Parkinson's folks, once I do reach that therapeutic level, it doesn't take nearly as many sessions as it may some of my non-Parkinson's patients. Once we remind that muscle what a full contraction is, it's so happy to do it that it just picks it right up. So a little bit of the tricky news, some of the really great news. Here's a little bit of that iffy news. So once I've done that treatment, for most folks, my non-Parkinson's folks, we may only need to do it every three years. The therapy holds that long. With Parkinson's, I can't really predict that. In six months, I may need to come back and do a little bit of a tune-up, or it may, I may never need to come back. So it just depends on your own individual situation. But I'm here for you, so come back and see me. All right, 
So once we have tried to improve your swallow, we may need to work on strategies to compensate for what we can't fully fix. And that may include um, altering the way or your positioning or um, maybe the food textures that, that you have. What I'm going to say here is that when you're working with your speech therapist, I want you to be wary of blanket statements that I've heard out in the community, which are things like, people with Parkinson's shouldn't use straws, or spit that gum out, you might choke on it. All right, that just doesn't make any sense. Now, what it takes is a speech therapist to come in and assess, all right, what's the best way for you to swallow? For some folks, it is using a straw. For other people, it, the water bottle even works great. And for some folks, I'll use more of a wide mouth, maybe a heavier glass if you're struggling with some tremors. But it's, it, it will really help to have a speech therapist determine what's best for you. So to answer the question, what we work on is we work to strengthen the system, compensate if need be, modify textures if need be. And another important part of the equation is to make sure you have a really good oral hygiene program. That's a really important way to prevent aspiration pneumonia. Our studies show that it's not always the food and liquid that causes the pneumonia, but it's the bad bacteria that is in your own mouth and in your saliva that then gets aspirated into the lungs and fosters and grows that, that pneumonia. So in a future video, I wanna go over with you what's a really good basic oral hygiene program. But as with anything, there's no one size fits all. You may need to talk with your speech therapist and your occupational therapist to develop a really good program for you. So thanks for joining me today and bon appetit.